all of you know, we are hopelessly behind. Here's my plan to catch up. And for less than an hour ago, I discussed this with my department head, Mr. Bennigan. I also discussed with other part-time faculty. And they seem to think this plan is solid. It does have some problems, but here's what we do. Yesterday, I lectured and finished chapters 18 and 19. I'm going to start with you where I left off with them. Today, you will get yesterday's lecture notes for my college. By default, what I begin to follow what I'm saying. And in the meantime, tomorrow's class, they will be hearing this lecture on their iCollege because what I plan to do is give uh, uh, yesterday's lecture, then today, the, the lecture I plan to give today, I'm going to give to you. So you will pick up what you didn't get on I. You'll pick it up on iCollege, and they'll be picking up on iCollege what they didn't hear. I plan to stagger it and do that till o'clock. Now, the other bit that might be good news for some of you, the lecture notes, in other words, the study guides that I told you I would not give. All those teachers got to back up a little bit and somewhat eat our words. The study guides now for only for chapters 18, 19, and 20 are on iCollege. That's the next test, is chapter 18. Now. Chapters 18, 19, and now, as to when the next test is going to be, it won't be on the date it's on the syllabus. Uh, to be, I think what I'm going to do is wait until the last day before spring break. Now, as far as I know, folk, there's, you're going to have next Tuesday off I mean, because we have all kinds of stuff planned. Uh, yeah, we're going to, uh, well, see, there'll be all of them. Hey, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you, I, better, I better be careful. I, don't quote me on anything. Nobody. I don't even think the president of the college knows what we're going to do. I don't even think the governor of the state knows what we're going to do. This, this made the Atlanta Journal yesterday. The fact of the matter is, we've never been in a hole this big in memory. This goes all the way from kindergarten through graduate school. And we don't know for sure what we're going to do. But I have not my own plan. Since I've rec been recording my own lectures, uh, you'll see the lecture I was going to give you today. You'll see it on my call. Okay, uh, now I know there's probably a lot of questions and uh, I had someone ask me, can the students see what's on the board? No, but you can at least go get the lecture notes, which is the stuff that put on the board anyway. All right, if, now, is that, is, are there any questions? Yes? The lecture notes will be on iCollege today. All right, oh, oh, I'm so glad you asked that. Right. Yesterday's lecture notes, I'm going to try. If not, it will be by tomorrow. I'm going to try. When the class is over, I'm going to stay right here and start. The reason I'm going to do it here is at home, it takes me an hour to put 10 minutes worth of notes online here. It can be done in about three minutes. But still, it takes some time. I'm going to stay here after class instead of going home and work like crazy, getting yesterday's lecture notes. But then I've got to turn right around and start putting today's on. And uh, I'd like to tell the professor, no, it doesn't. They don't put it there automatically. But the, uh, the, lecture, the, the lecture notes are the, the, the study guides, what do you call them? They're there, they're there already. They were put there an hour ago. They're on my college now. The um, recorded lectures from yesterday, not there yet. Uh, some of you have your laptops, you can find, if you can't find them, let me know. I'll see what I can do to adjust them. But the lecture notes should be there. Yesterday's lecture from yesterday's class is not. Any other questions? Okay, then if, uh, if all minds are as clear as I can make them, uh, we will proceed. Now, again, skipping over what I gave to the other class yesterday. I'm looking at page 546 in the book. They're comparing the Industrial Revolution to Britain. Now, um, oh yeah, before I go on to the Industrial Revolution, there is one thing I want to say about Napoleon. I always want to do this when I'm giving the lecture on Napoleon, and I always make sure I'm wearing 
not a sweater, but a button-down shirt. This is Napoleon's very famous pose. From You'll see a picture of him. He's always, just about always looking like this. And you may wonder why. One theory was it was the style in those days. Most people who posed for pictures posed like this. Now, I want to ask you a question. Why do the old time paintings never show the subject smiling? Why is he always looking at a very straight poker face? Anybody know? Yes. You can't hold a smile for six to ten hours folk a day. And the same way with the old the first photographs, the exposure time was about six minutes, maybe ten minutes. So they tell you, you've got to hold yourself really still. The only thing you do is blink, but hold yourself real still. And most of them they look very somber. And if you look at pictures of your great great grandfathers or your ancestors. Uh, they don't show them smiling for some reason. You could you could hardly hold a smile for even eight or ten minutes. Uh, just thought I'd throw that in for good measure. Anyway, uh, all right. Back to the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution began in Great Britain, and then it spread from there to uh, to the United States, and spread to France and Germany. Some nations did not industrialize. The United States, though, was a little bit different from Britain in that the United States was large, Great Britain was small. Um, but the United States seemed to have been very industrious and had reasons to want to industrialize. And also, the fact the United States was large meant that the United States had big distances and needed to be covered quickly. The United States built uh, thousands of miles of roads and canals. The roads at first were very rough. I mean, if you can imagine pulling a with a mule, uh, uh, pulling a wagon over a log road, and the logs had to be replaced off, and they did not know about uh, pressure treating or keeping the logs from rotting. Canals were dug, and the advantage of a canal is uh, one even half lame horse, well I wouldn't say lame, but uh, even an old horse can pull a large barge on a canal. I would take one horse and he could pull several tons. And uh, this meant that the, the horse could carry a whole lot more than he could carry if he was pulling away. One horse, now the big disadvantage to canals is canals tended to freeze up in the winter time and it had to be constantly clear to keep from silting up in flooding weather. Um, the canal was replaced by the railroad. The railroad was more important to the development of uh, American industry than it was in Britain because Britain, the distances to be covered were shorter. But in the United States, the distances were large and the railroad uh, came about in the 1830s and more and more rail lines were laid and then they eventually learned how to pressure treat their lumber and get the um, lumber to where it would not rot so much, or rot so fast, and um, more and more miles of rail were laid. And the locomotives eventually got to where they could go up to a speed of 50 or 60 miles an hour, which in those days was extremely fast, and the locomotives could carry very, very heavy loads. Now, even fast forward to 2014, the railway is still the cheapest way to get a large volume of goods over land. You want to ship a large amount of wheat, a large amount of corn, a large amount of coal, or even cars. The cheapest way is by rail. And if you get stopped by a train, you'll notice anymore that most of the trains are really truck beds. Some of the trucks, they take the wheels off, and in some cases, they leave the wheels on and just put rail wheels on them. I mean, most of you probably know what I'm talking about. And that saves money because they load up the truck bed and then they can offload it, put a driver on the other end of the truck bed, and uh, Carry the, carry the truck where it needs to go. But uh, again, saves a lot of money because you can get hundreds of trucks on one tr train, and uh, that means you're not paying hundreds of drivers who would be uh, having to drive if they were driving. Anyway, um,
the process of industrializing has always been very, very painful for the, at the first when people do it. Um, it has been said that factories enslaved mankind far more than he'd ever been enslaved before because the factory owner wanted you right there on the spot when a whistle blew, usually around 7 o'clock in the morning, and they wouldn't let you off until they, they were through, whereas a farmer, he could get up when he chose to, get out and work his fields when he chose to. The, when the factory system came along, they wanted the whole crew there to start right on time. Um, also, initially, the pay was very, very low. The carvings you'll see on page 551 are very, very famous carvings that have been included in most high school and college books for maybe more than 100 years, but they're uh, carvings of women chained to their the, the wagon they're pulling, and they're working in coal mines where the shaft is so low they cannot stand up straight in them, and a lot of persons became deformed doing this. It was not just women, but children also, women and children. And, um, this led to calls for reform. Now, on a personal note, my great-grandfather had to quit school when he was 10 years old and go work in a woolen mill in Caddies, Ohio. I mean, if you've never heard of the town of Caddies, it's there. And the woolen mill, the last account I had, it was still standing, even though it's not been in use for many years. But most of the people in Caddies would work at this woolen mill, men and women, boys and girls alike, at the time they turned 10. They would attend school from the time they were six to 10, then work in this woolen mill for pennies a day, and conditions were very rough. And a lot of these people looked, they looked like a 60-year-old man by the time they were 25. I mean, by our standards, they looked like they were 65. Um,